Hello and welcome back to another 5K Tennis Discussion. It is Sunday, June the 16th, 2019, and we are here for show number 91. Let's go! I can't say her little welcome back to 5K Tennis Discussion was that amplified or motivated, but we're going to get her there. It's like monotone. Hello, welcome back to another 5K Tennis Discussion. That was Osaka-ish. A little Osaka-ish, but we're ready. Super excited about this show, by the way. So we're going to get right into this show. Well, Carla and I have taken seven days off uh, after running through the French Open and every other day, or every other day prior to that. Uh, so we are going to uh, jump right into grass court season beginning right now. Uh, well, before you do anything, I want to give a big thank you to Michael Figgins. Uh, he sent us a hat. He was in London, and we appreciate the hat. Great gift. Uh, Wimbledon hat. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go. Boom. Slam the hat. Unfold the brim of the hat. Bust the hat. Wearing the hat. Let's get down with the hat. Yes. Hmm. Much love, Michael Figgins, uh, uh, to think of us in London. And by the way, he even sent us a picture with the 5K tennis shirt just like that one. In front of the center court at Wimbledon. So, loved it. Appreciate the hat. <laughs> What's up? Nothing. What happened? You were excited today. I was. Well, Still I guess it's happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, by the way. Five kids deep. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Uh, cinco niños. Cinco niños. Let's go. Me, me, cinco niños. All right, please like, share, and subscribe um, to our channel. Uh, you can catch up with us, and, and I say us, I should say, you can catch up with Carla on a lot of different platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, anything I'm missing, email? Uh, email 5ktennis uh, at mail.com is another way you can reach us. And you can see all these links if you expand the description field. If you're on a cellular device or computer, hit the down arrow to expand title and description. And you can see the links that Carla has placed there. So you can catch up with Carla uh, or myself there. She'll let me know. But generally, Carla will keep up with it daily. Okay? Uh, we are going to start this show today with some debt collection. It's always great when we collect debts. <laughs> and this debt collection comes from Rahesh Kumar, who is in Houston, Texas. Uh, and, and Rahesh Kumar took a bet with Carla um, at the beginning of the clay court season, well, actually after, just after the Australian Open, and the bet was that Novak Djokovic would win the Ooh. French Open. Mm -hmm. uh, you said no, Wimbledon. not Wimbledon. Not Wimbledon. We're, 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 we're going to talk about Wimbledon. Yeah, he thinks he's going to win Wimbledon too. But the, but the bet between the two of them, Carla and Rahesh, was whether or not uh, Novak Djokovic would win the French Open. Well, Carla bet that he would not, and Rahesh bet that he would, and Rahesh has stepped up to the plate and paid his debt. So, let me explain um, really quickly how these bets work. If you are new to this show or new to this channel, we will take on bets, uh, Carla or myself, against any of you when, um, when we're called out or vice versa, we'll call you out. So the first bet that was ever undertaken uh, by us was with Rahesh Kumar and Carla um, before Wimbledon, or was it the U.S. Open? It was the U before U.S. Open last year. Uh, Rahesh bet that Novak Djokovic would win the U.S. Open. She bet would not. And after he did, Carla paid her debt uh, to everyone by painting herself up and sh wore a shirt painted all over, I love Djokovic, all of her arms and legs, and then did like a three-hour show, by the way, and we'll put links above to it, at like um, four minutes and 30 seconds. Um, so she spoke for an hour, all painted up, and just looked really foolish, and I'll put a link above so you can actually see it, okay? The second bet that we entertained for this type of thing was myself with Ethan D.A. about Roger Federer winning uh, the French Open. He did not, and I wore a dress. No, no, it wasn't about Roger Federer. It was Serena not winning Wimbledon. What? Yes, Ethan. My D bet was with Roger Federer winning the French Open. No, that was with I see Anis. Uh, yeah, Anis Zou. Yeah, that yeah, has yeah. nothing to do with Ethan. Ethan was with Serena. You okay, said well, Serena way. would win. Yes. Okay, so I, so uh, I still owe Anis Zou a bet, but he's disappeared. Hopefully, he's well. But yes, you are correct. 
But either way, I paid my debt. I paid my due by wearing a dress on this show. And I'll put a link above it about five minutes and ten seconds. I wore a dress on the show. Okay? I'm just saying for an hour. So what we're going to do is Carla's going to get up and she is going to play the video that Rahesh sent us for his debt payment. Um, and when we get done, we are going to rate his debt payment with <laughs> with the cornerstone, with the variable, with the constant variable being uh, my dress or her painting um, as kind of where we're trying to go with this. So Carla's going to play the video and we're going to rate his video on the following categories. The thought that went into it, the execution that went into it, the, the originality that went into it, the overall delivery and his overall tone and delivering the video to you all based upon... Um, those factors, we're going to judge it on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10. 1 being extremely weak and 10 being absolutely, what's up, brought the pain. All right, you ready to play it? I'm ready. All right, Carla, let's let Rahash's debt payment go. Hi, Carla and Justin. Yes, I lost the bet. After three attempts, Carla won. Carla was right. Novak did not win, but Carla was wrong as well. She said some new champion, but again, it was Rafa 18. Congratulations, Carla, but let's see in Wimbledon, okay? Another challenge is awaiting. Bye, have a nice day, and I do accept I lost this time. All righty then. <laughs> so we, we, we do have uh, the video now complete. Uh, I, I must reiterate that uh, there was a picture there. That was a picture on top of the shirt, not an actual shirt. Uh, so let, let's let's real quickly let's rate this video. Uh, and, and by the way, bravo on the uh, on the debt payment. But you know, here as um, debt um, scorers, we're like the judges. We have to just be brutally honest because how will we create debt champions if we don't have? Uh, really supreme debt payoff. So um, on a scale of 1 to 10, Carla, based upon the thought, the execution, the originality, the overall delivery, and tone, how would you rate Rahesh's um, video on a scale of 1 to 10? Hmm. A 3. That's a 3? A 3. Okay, why, why do you think he deserves a 3? Well, because I think he could have done a little bit more. I told him he could put a picture on his shirt, but I thought he was going to, like, you know, maybe pin it. So that was, that was your idea? Yeah, I told him. Because he said he was going to get a, a shirt that said Roth. And I said, no, you don't have to go and spend money. I said, you could just pin it. You know, like I did, sort of. I wrote on my shirt. and But I expected him to say more like, I love Nadal. He is the best. Djokovic lost. I was wrong, and I didn't hear that. So you he get... Said, he said, but Carla said that we would have a new winner after three tries, he said. So it sounds like he's deferring the defeat to you. Correct. Okay, so there's some deference there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... And I did say there would be a new champion, but it didn't happen. But you won the bet. So I won the bet, no, yes. boy. Okay, so number one, the thought, the, the thought that went into it was really your thought. So on a scale of one to ten, we're right, right next to the bottom. Yes. Number two, the execution. The execution was, you know, maybe could have pinned it, you know, maybe could have like, you know, whatever. So the execution was maybe, you know, four or five on the scale. So he executed it, but I wouldn't say executed it, you know, like at the top of his game. The originality of it, again, let's defer back to the thought. I, I think that was kind of your picture deal. Yes. In, in a sense, though, uh, the overall delivery and tone. I didn't sense a whole bunch of hard-hitting and, and sheer acting in this. I, I get it's not his truth because he wanted Djokovic to win and he did not. But I still didn't get... Guess I'm guessing you didn't even watch the final because it was Nadal. So what, I, what I'm going to do is, is I rated this at, at, uh, at a 2.96. Okay? <laughs> That's worse than mine. 2.96 here. I, I thought it could have been delivered more intently. I think you could have sold the act a little bit better. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it was just okay, dog. It's just okay, dog. Who was that that did that? American Idol? It was just okay for me. Um, it was just okay for was me. His name. Randy? Randy, Randy Jackson, yeah. So, um... I mean, he tried. 
Obviously, he wasn't enthusiastic about it. You can tell. Can, can you play that again? You can tell. Can, you, his, can you give us one more shot at that? You can tell by his voice. You want me to get up and show? Yeah, him? yeah. Let's let's do that again. Uh, again, I want to justify the two point nine six. Let's let's use again Carlos' dress uh, and my uh, Carlos uh, painting up like Djokovic and, and my dress for an hour with high energy. Uh, and let's let's relate it to Rahesh. All right, here we go. Let's get it done. Here we go. Yes, I lost the bet. After three attempts, Carla won. Carla was right. <laughs> Novak did not win. But Carla was wrong as well. She said some new champion. But again, it was Rafa 18. Congratulations, Carla. But let's see in Wimbledon. Okay? Another challenge is awaiting. Bye. Have a nice day. And I do accept I lost this time. I think I could listen to that every day for the rest of this <laughs> for the rest of this year, and I would smile. So if there was a category for just sheer heart behind that, I, I, I would rank I would rate it further. But in terms to, for, for to make me smile, it gives me a ten just because I hear his voice. He's kind of mellow, and so I'll give him a ten for that. Yeah, we'll give him a ten for that. But overall, overall, I'm gonna keep the two point nine six. Okay. All right. All right, let's move forward into the first topic uh, of this show, and this is our first grass court season show. And, and Carla, uh, last year you and I started uh, this show at the same point in time. Basically, I, I still don't think it's quite a year. We started. No, we started at Wimbledon. We started like we the started. day before Wimbledon, yes. I think, like the Saturday before the Monday where Wimbledon started. So we're close. Uh, but topic number one, let's talk about this. Um, we have heard and we have read now at this point multiple articles. That in this year's upcoming U.S. Open, right? Yes. And that's this year's U.S. Open uh, in a few months in New York. And uh, for the following year's Australian Open, we have now been advised that we have and we will be having what, Carla? Sideline coaching. Sideline coaching. Now, not on-court coaching, but we will be having coaching eligible from the stands, from the stands yes. in between points. Uh, so, and, and again, we had to check our stories here and read it and read it and read it because this is a huge change. This is, this is a gargantuan change in the game uh, of tennis, and especially in the men's game. We have had um, uh, the brutality of having to watch women being coached on the actual court. And, it's, and we've just knocked that down for, for show after show. Uh, and we've always been very happy that it has not been involved uh, in the men's game. But it looks like uh, we are now um, just hoping that all four majors do not go to it because it is now going to be sheer a sheer battle between those that oppose and those that uh, want to see it happen at this point. Because right now, uh, it, all hands are on deck for coaching from the stands for the men and women during the U.S. Open and during the Australian Open. Well, they do it on juniors. They did experiment with this last year in the juniors. So they've been doing it for the juniors. And there are a lot of people that are against it. Uh, I, I read where Tim Henman said, what are we doing to the juniors? We're not letting them develop, think for themselves. You know, a coaching is supposed to be done before the match and after the match. Uh, playing tennis is one on one like gladiators. What are we doing? Them going into profession, they're not going to think for themselves. They're not going to resolve their problems. So we're making the juniors weaker when they go into the pros. I agree with him. Why would we do this? First of all, it's not a team sport. It's a one on one sport. Yeah, and, and, and let's be real too. There's no timeouts in tennis. You know, you know. So let's let's say. By the way. We just watched the NBA Finals. We had the Toronto Raptors that beat in six games the Golden State Warriors. Good good for both teams involved. Too bad the Warriors had a lot of injuries, but, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. It, it happened, and, and, and the better team, no matter what the, the variables are, won. Uh, but let, let me just, just reiterate that um, in, in, in sports, right, uh, besides tennis, if someone gets hurt, uh, you know, uh, I hate to see that happen, but if someone gets hurt, there's an injury timeout. If someone um, is running off, if one team is running off like point after point after point, now the, the, the other team can say, whoa, time out. we got to slow down and figure everything out here. Last time I checked, there wasn't timeouts in tennis, and there is a, uh, a serving shot clock now where they're counting down from 24. 
So how does the if you're if you're if you just lose a point in the middle of a game and you're able to sit there and talk to your box, but you still bounce the ball twelve times with the likes of uh, Djokovic or pick your underwear for twelve minutes like Nadal or Federer wiping his hair off of his eyes, but I I, 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 I gotta do the same thing. I, I hate to say Federer's hair because he serves pretty rapidly. Uh, but, but anyway, ju- just saying. So what are, what are we going to have to make this? I mean, is, is there going to be now timeouts in tennis so I can talk to my box? Is there going to be like three timeouts that we get every I, match? I, I just don't how, how does this even go but down? But I don't understand how they're going to do it because as we remember, Serena and her coach, Patrick, this is the reason why Serena got heated. Deducted she was accused of cheated. And, you know, we all saw how it went down. So how are we going to do this? Are there going to be signs like... Like, I don't understand how they're going to do coaching from the stands. Like baseball. Because how can you do coaching from the stands? You would have to say, hey, don't forget to turn. Don't forget to slice, attack when they come into the net. Make sure they have a weaker backhand. How do you do this? So now we're going to have signs? I don't get it. How how is this going to work? Uh, first of all, it's a sham. S H A M, sham. With a capital S H A M, like in a comic book. When you used to read Spider Man, and you would read it instead of watch it, and, and it would say, Shablow! It would be in big letters. Shablow on this deal. I mean, look. Uh, the, the Coaching from the stands. I mean, I understood the on court coaching because the coach came down and whatever. We got to hear their conversation. But Stan, how is that? How is that going to work? Look, my, my animosity towards this, and maybe that's the wrong word. My impatience for this uh, predicate is, is predicated from uh, already uh, making majors have tiebreakers in the fifth set, at least three of the four now because of a Mahout Isner match. I, I, I'm just saying, uh, or Anderson and Isner, whatever. Again, so so all these changes. It, it seems like the tennis masses, at least in the new world hemisphere that we have discussed today in some of these articles, you know, like the the New World Tennis Slams, meaning the U.S. Open and the New World Australian Open. Well, uh, Australian Open said they were going to do it. Do it as well. And next the, year. The yes. New World. But the, the, the articles we read were indicating that the Old World Tennis, Wimbledon and the French Open wouldn't allow it. Look, everyone hammers me talking about tradition, tradition, tradition. I get the Hawkeye thing. I do. The, the, the Sisti Foss match with, what was it, Warinka? Yeah, I, I get the ball was out and, and uh, the Hawkeye. Okay, great. It doesn't take for two seconds, whatever. But man, when you're talking about coaching from the sidelines, especially in the men's game, think about this. Think about this, Carla. Uh, let's pretend like I really don't like you, and we're in the Wild West, or we're in the uh, the night ages of the 14 and 1500s, or in the bar scene in the New York area, like the Gangs of New York movies with what DiCaprio or something, and you want to battle something out. All right, let's step out back. Let's grab a sword or, or a dagger an axe. or an axe <laughs> or, or a chain with a big spike on the end of it, and let's go out there. Here we go, Carla. I will like you. You will like me? Let's go. Let's go out back. Come on. Someone's dying today. You go out back and take a big swipe with the axe. Air ball misses her face, does not decapitate her, does not cut the head off. Carla comes after me with two machetes. <laughs> You know, she does her finishing move, but in reality, she misses totally. Hold on, time out. Hold up, wait a minute. Stop, now. The death match stops now. Carla, go talk to your coach over there. I'm going to go talk to mine and see why I didn't just decapitate you. (laughs) And we're going to go back at it? Isn't this what it is it is is about, is being a duel? It is a duel. So what do we got timeouts now during the death match? That's all I'm saying. Tennis is predicated on a duel. Yeah, and I think Tim Henman said there were like over 30 people in the council that did not agree with this um, coaching. They just did, did not want to have this. It changes tennis. It, what are we doing to tennis? We're making, I mean, we're making tennis weaker for the Man. juniors. I mean, we're already doing it with juniors. So we have problems with juniors as it is being on a smartphone or worry about, you know, social media or what's going around them. And now we're going to baby them even more. Yeah. The next thing we know, we've already gone from no tiebreakers in the fifth set to tiebreakers, at least less the French Open. We have already gone to Hawkeye, or no Hawkeye, to Hawkeye. You know, forget about the line judges when all is said and done. We have never heard of challenges, and now we have challenges. And, and, you know, in the past, what, 20 years or so, 15 years or so. uh, Next, I think, uh, we are going to have coaching on the sidelines, which... Again, is ultimate cheese ball. Well, what I think coaching from the stands is the next step would be 
encore coaching at Grand Slams. That's where I would go to. I think it's a theatrical performance, unnecessary and unneeded. Maybe it's a way for coaches to get paid more. Maybe, I, I would think the coaches like this, at least the ones that want to have their faces on TV, because it gives them an opportunity to sell themselves. True. So I'm sure that the coach likes this, if, at, least you're, at least if you're a pretty boy coach that has a big ego. I mean, if it were me, I'd rather just stay off camera and say, get the camera out of my face and let me talk to my player. Just saying. But I think what's next What's next on the agenda is we'll have timeouts. Well, I think someone said, what about those... I'm getting the coaching now. They said, well, what about those kids can't afford those coaches that travel with them? So what That's we're gonna a have, good point. What we're going to have now, parents telling them what to do? It's going to be a whole fiasco, you know, Yeah, so, so, so player A, who's a qualifier in juniors or qualifier in the main draws, doesn't have a pot to pee in. They don't even have a coach. They're borrowing rackets in a sense besides the two that they have. Uh, and, and, and the other person that they're playing has got 36 rackets, four coaches, a physio, and a nutritionist, and a dietitian, uh, and three people in the stands. This person just came in on a taxi cab. So, so this person's you know keeping it close. The other person's getting uh, uh, everything that they need to, to keep going. So does this tell you that money uh, makes champions? Uh, because some people won't be able to afford to have people in their box. Correct. Yeah. So how is it fair? It's not fair. We shouldn't even have the um the you know the stand coaching, coaching by the sidelines. I don't agree with that at all. It's not football. It's, it's not soccer. It's yeah, not this, basketball. This is making the richer play, This is making the richer players better. And the, and the, and uh, well, and, you know, look. Put it this way. Negative. I, scratch that. Forget about the richer because the, those that fought and took practice and bombed out swimming pools with the likes of a lot of Serbian players and, and many more in that area of the world. No, let, let's just be real. If you can practice in bombed out swimming pools and still get a good workout in and you got to go, hey, mommy, what did I do wrong up here? What's wrong with my butt? Kind of like potty mouth Putin Sava when she misses a shot. She's like, how did I what Who else does that? Sousa, the, the Portuguese player? Sevastova. Sevastova and crying at their boxes. I hate to be in your box if you can coach me from the sideline uh, and, and ultimately... Uh, you share in the blame of what's going on court because it's not. Anyway, moving forward, topic number two, right? Players not playing grass court warm-ups, okay? So there's a lot of players, just like during the French, that decided not to play a lot of tournaments leading up to the clay court finale, which was Roland Garros, so the French Open. And there's a lot more at this point that are not playing any grass court warm-ups as we roll into Wimbledon. So with that said, um, should there be more time in between the French Open and Wimbledon? Uh, it, it, they, they are very close together, first and foremost. They extended it one week because many years ago when Jennifer Garpelli was playing, this was in the 1990s, 2000s, early. It was two weeks, I think, they used to get. And then they played. Now it's three weeks of grass. And it's still very close. It's still very close. I mean, you have, between the Australian Open and the U.S. Open, a year. You have between the French Open and the U.S. Open, uh, what, seven or eight months? I, sorry, so from I, I the didn't... Australian Open to the French Open, the Australian Open starts in January, right? And in, May, and in May, so about four or five months. So that's enough space right there. And then and then at the end of May to the beginning of July, so a month and a half, and then the next major would be... Um, September, uh, end of August to September is the U.S. Open. Yeah, it would be the U.S. Open. So I mean, these things are these things are kind of crunched well, together. Well, maybe they should move up the French Open a little bit. That way, there's more room. Maybe give a month instead of like speed three up weeks. the French. But then you have Miami, if I remember correctly, and it would and, just and never Wells. Win. Well, that's their fault, the way they set it up. It would never work well, out. Well, yeah. Well, now you have the Labor Cup, the, the potential talk of the World Team Cup, uh, and other tournaments that may pop up now that some of these tournaments have become privatized, like the Labor Cup with the likes of Labor and Roger Federer and Bjorn Borg and all these other guys. So what is Djokovic? Djokovic is obviously the... the, the I, I think we heard that Djokovic is not going to play in the Labor Cup this year, right? Well, we have... Uh, there's five players that are confirmed on the Europe side, which is uh, you've got Federer, Fognini, Alexander Zverev, and Dominic Thiem, and Nadal. Those are confirmed. Uh, no team for the world. None of them have been announced. John McEnroe has, has not confirmed one player yet. I think it would be reasonable to say that Federer and Nadal's arch nemesis would be Novak Djokovic. That's fair to say. And, and I don't think Djokovic will play this tournament. Why would he? you got uh, well, Federer, I, well, Nadal... What I think will occur is Novak Djokovic will form a tournament of his own at some point in time to compete for the capital or the or the income 
uh, that they're going to get off the Labor Cup if it continues on its trajectory in an upwards fashion. Carla and I didn't watch the Labor Cup. We thought it was cheesy. We thought it was weak. It was a bunch of grown men acting like three-year-old boys on the court. It looked like a. It just looked like a. It looked like a theatrical performance. We've already talked about this before. Uh, well, but well, let that lineup of Mimi, Alexander Zverev, T, and Federer, no doubt. Who's going to compete on the other side? Who are you going to have competing? I fell, I fell asleep off that lineup in the first but place. But that lineup is strong. Who's going to compete on the other side? No okay, wait a minute. This is a hard court tournament. You're telling me Fabio Fagnini is your golden bully? Maybe, what, the they, young they Zverev, get, the they, young Zverev hasn't won anything all year long. I think he's played Ma- Labor Cup before, though. But yeah, but what I'm saying is this a bunch of is this a bunch of pretty boys on the court? Because it sounds like the beautiful beard, Fognini, and it sounds like pretty boy that looks like a tennis player but still can't find his way, Borg Junior, but just never ended up being Borg Junior. That is the young Sasha Alexander Zverev. That, in my opinion, needs a whole lot of work because he's going to be outside the top fifty. Come next year, if something doesn't happen, I get he had a decent French Open run, but he better be lucky it was Clay. I personally think he's going to get blown off the court uh, by his older brother if they met at Wimbledon. But wait a minute, Misha Zverev might give him the match simply because he feels sorry been, for his Misha's little brother. Misha's been losing the last few times. I don't know. So. Serving and bowling at Wimbledon is pretty, he lost is pretty last, advantageous. He couldn't even qualify for this uh, grass tournament. That well, they whatever. Have. I'm just saying. Do you think I'm going to go travel to... Where where's the where is the uh it's gonna be like uh Gen- Geneva? Geneva. Yeah, so, and Rorinka is not playing and he'd rather play, he said, another tournament for his country. So, so I'm gonna go take a week of vacation and travel from here, broke as I can be like everyone else in civilization these days, with the exception of very few. I'm gonna travel across the world and spend thousands of dollars to go watch Fognini, uh Zverev compete. On, Dominic Tiam, Nadal and Federer. On on, on, on a theat- these are all primrose pretty boys. This is a theatrical performance. Do you think they're going to give it 100% over there and risk blowing out their knee or back or face or whatever or works over there at that Pretty Boy Labor Cup? You telling me they're going to do that? Why even play? I, I don't get it. Sorry. We'll move they forward. should just say Exhibition Labor Cup. That All would sound better. All right, Carl. Yeah, it's an exhibition. It's a, it's a theatrical performance. In my opinion, some of the end, end of the year tennis in the London 02, the ATP Finals, in my opinion, to some point, it won't is be theatrical. It won't be in London either. Anymore. Jeez. What a ridiculous setup that is. I, I would assume the tournament schedule is compact as it is filled with tournaments from the beginning of the year all the way until Shanghai and Paris in late November. Uh, I, I would assume we'll get more filled now. Uh, I would assume Djokovic will take a piece of this pie and create some other cup. He, you know, they had the Labor Cup. Maybe we'll have the Becker Cup. They had that already. Okay. Something like that. Okay. It didn't work okay, well, he'll try it again, and maybe we'll have the uh, Vajda Cup. Something. I mean, he's got to compete with it somehow, because how can you let su- such preposterousness as the Labor Cup suck up more capital from your arch nemesis. Anyway, Carla, can we discuss real quick how many players are not playing grass court tournament warm-ups prior to Wimbledon? Sure. We have Dominic Thiem that pulled out um, due to exhaustion of of how. You have Nadal, who has not played a grass warm-up tournament since 2015. Djokovic is resting his body as well. Uh, not playing any grass tournaments. Fogmimi, does it really matter? He's never really done well, I don't think, in grass. I don't know how far he's gone. But due to injury, he's not playing any uh, pre-Wimbledon tournaments. You have uh, Kei Nishikori as well, who decided not to play any warm-up tournaments. Uh, Madison Keys, Petra Kvitova due to injury, and Serena Williams will not be playing any grass tournaments. That's that's good information. Uh, you wrote for a while. I only knew of three, and that's a lot more than three. Who of those players, who of those players that Carla just read off uh, actually have a shot at Wimbledon anyway? I say Kvitova does. Kvitova, Serena. I say Serena does. Yes. Uh, and there was one more in there. Madison Keys, I think, can hit you she off has the a court. Great I think Madison Keys has a chance. Yes. Again, we, we know that Madison Keys is not going to strategically beat you, but she can hit you off the court. Uh, so this would be the major, I think, where uh, she can actually, uh, actually win if, if all the cards fall. Uh, correctly, yeah, I guess you could say. Yeah, if we had seeds falling, let's say, losing in the first, second round, she would have a big chance. Yeah. Players like Nadal, Djokovic, is smart for them not to play. I mean, Nadal just won the French Open. Why put more wear and tear in his body? Djokovic as well. There's times where he hasn't played any grass tournaments and has won Wimbledon. 
So it's obvious that they don't need the grass pre grass tournaments to win the Grand Slam. Yeah, and, and furthermore, as we were leading up to the French Open, and we started doing our pre French Open discussions of Roland Garros. I say both because we some people know it by either way. When I was a boy, there was it wasn't termed Roland Garros; it was just the French Open. So I say it both ways. Uh, but we got into the same dilemma and argument about, hey, this guy or uh, this young lady's not playing any warm up tournaments. Uh, you know, and oh, it's the surface, and uh, look, Kirigo's got his panties in a wad, saying, oh, no one even plays warm-ups because no one likes clay, and blah, 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 blah. Well, I bet you he kind of looks like a schmuck now, because a lot of the big, bigger players in the world aren't even playing grass. Uh, so, uh, again... It, and the, he shouldn't be saying that, because he lost to Berenti in the first round. I think Berenti beat Struff in the final here, though. Not Struff, no. A he semifinal looks, then? He, uh, probably somewhere around Some, there. Somewhere He just there. won a title. And, and we'll get to that real quickly. Uh, but I don't think it's a big deal. Um, that I think it's less of a big deal that some of these players are not playing grass than it is when some players don't play clay because there's a, a, a multiple months in between the Australian and clay and the run-up to the French Open, and there's only like six weeks in between the French Open and Wimbledon. So people are tired. Dominic Thiem has to be exhausted, right? Been, and and as you, well, we were watching, who were we watching? Rennick play? Uh, who was he playing? Oh, Sangha. That was a good match. Completely different game. We were used to, I told Justin, I said, maybe we got used to watching the ball go so slow that this is so fast for us. We were watching Raynick surf, boom, and then Sangha, boom, it was like one, two, one, two. Which was good tennis. One, two. That that was a good match. It was fast. Yeah, that that was a two out of three set match. If I remember correctly, it was like six, seven, seven, six. No, seven, six, six, seven, seven, six. Yeah, it was a big serving competition, but but it was a really good match between uh, Rayanek and Sangha, and that was a couple of days ago. Right. And we thought about all of you during that match. We were thinking about taking notes, and I think it was like midnight our time. We were watching kind of the replay of it. But a good match and, and great tennis in that match. Uh, real quick, moving forward, since since we are thinking uh, are talking about right now the, th- the thick of things in Wimbledon. Let's right now name off the top of our heads. That's all of you. That's all of us. Let's name off the top of our heads some players, men's and women's, that we all think have the game to do a lot of damage at Wimbledon or just to do damage uh, at all. In other words, win a few rounds. Make the second week. Here, here's my list, and I'll do it quickly. Nate Kyrgios, Petra Kvitova, Serena Williams, Venus Williams, Ivo Karlovich, Novak Djokovic, Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Ashley Barty, Riley Opelka, yeah, I said it. He's got a big serve. I have him on my list. Uh, Carolina Pliskova, Kevin Anderson, John Isner, Milos Ranich, mm-hmm. uh, Madison Keys, Naomi Osaka, Sloane Stevens, Victoria Azarenka. A couple outside players looking in that can bring the bring the noise, in my opinion. Uh, Marketa Vondrusheva, uh, Bianca Andreescu, Petra Martic. Some dark horses looking in from the outside, in my opinion. Johanna Kanta. Danielle Collins. Oh, I have her too. Uh, Kaya Kanepi, uh, Annette Kontavit, uh, Belinda Benchik, and Borna Korich. These are all players that Chorich, I. Korich, yes. Korich, yeah. Well, Agura Lassim just made a final. Fair enough. Edmund, Kyle Edmund usually does grass. He's, he's British. You know, so we'll never know. I mean, you never what know. What about Dan Evans? Uh, he could do well with the crowd pumping him up. Fair enough. Yeah, he could do. He, I, and I had Collins, by the way, good pick there. How, how about some dark horses like Schwiatek? Or Schweitek. How about Bernard Tomek that has a good grass court game? That... I don't think so. I think you're dreaming too much. How, how, how about Sophia Kennan? She could do good. She's a ha- hard hitter. How about I just said all the first names and last names, and I only wrote down the last name. That's what I talk about. Get down. Let's go. Is John Isner playing? So far. I'm sure Isner's going to play. Well, Kevin Anderson's playing. We know that. Yeah, I- I'm sure they're going to play. Uh, and there's some more. You big... got Sam Quarry. He could be another someone that could win a first few rounds. He's got a big serve. So th- think about this. Good topic. Put in comments below who you think are some names that, hey, they may shock the world. They may just win a couple of rounds, but you're going to hear them moving through the rounds at least a little bit. Um, think about this as you are thinking about those comments. Prepare your fantasy team selections and prepare the thought of who you think will make it to the finals of Wimbledon. Um, if you're new to this channel, we do prize giveaways for every major, and we always do uh, two of them for sure for apparel and strings, etc. Based upon fantasy team selections, top five men, top five women within the top 20, or, and uh, three more outside the top 20. And then if you predict three out of the four finalists for the men and three out of the, or excuse me, uh, t- if you predict the, the men's and women, women's finalists and you get three out of the four 
and select your winners and get one, then you qualify to win uh, that Wilson Byrne countervail tennis racket that no one won at the French Open. And we'll talk more about that moving forward. I don't want to lose anybody on that currently, uh, but we'll talk more about that as Wimbledon knocks on the door. All right? Uh, but please start thinking about dark horses, players, look and start thinking about them moving forward if you're interested in the prize giveaways. All right? Uh, talking about prize giveaways, we already uh, have a couple of bets on uh, the books for Wimbledon. And, and if you may have heard this before, we will uh, go ahead and, and uh, reiterate what those already are. Uh, there's already a bet on the books for Wimbledon between Carla and Ethan D.A. that um, Osaka or Serena will go farther than the other and the draw at Wimbledon. She took Serena. Ethan B.A. took Osaka. So if Osaka goes farther than Serena, Ethan B.A. would win and vice versa. And one of the two must humiliate themselves, kind of like what Rah no, Rahesh. Really, what would, yeah, well, have fun with it. Have fun with it. All right. uh, the second bet is between Carla and I. Uh, I chose Ashley Barty to go farther in Wimbledon than Amanda Anisimova. So if Barty goes farther than Amanda Nisimova in Wimbledon, she will lose a bet. I think she's setting up herself for losing two bets this tournament. Well, you kind of made me take that one, so... You spoke too soon. That's what you get. Mm. Peter Dixry in Sweden called me out on a bet, and I accepted, and that is that Roger Federer will win Wimbledon. He uh, bet me that, in a sense, that Roger Federer would not win Wimbledon. I said he will. That's a better bet than the French Open, you're saying. Well, I took Federer there. I paid my bet and wore a dress, but I hope... No, that had nothing to do with that bet. Well, Serena, whatever. Yes. I'm just saying, I pay my bets. I pay my bets. I hope Peter's ready to pay his bet, because I'm very positive that Roger Federer will win Wimbledon. Okay? He'll win it, and I think he might think about retiring with 21 majors. That's how history will be written. I'm telling you right now, let's go. I'm telling you, that's what will happen. Just telling you. Advising the world. Now. Mm. All right? Mm. Topic number four, okay? Current grass court warm-up tournaments, uh, results, and any upcoming tournaments, Queens Club, Nature Valley Classic, Libema Open, or whatever they are as they run up, Howl Germany, I think is all a run-up to grass court. Well, Carl some of them already played. And let's discuss after these results, do they even matter? Do, they, do these wins and losses matter? Moving towards Wimbledon, or do the players that are not even playing win it anyway? Okay, well, we had the Mercedes Cup. It's a 250 in Stuttgart. Your champion there is Matteo Barenti from Italy. He defeated Felix Aguralassim from Canada, 6 4, 7 6. Uh, it's his third title. He actually went through a lot of players uh, to get there. A good tournament for the young Canadian. Uh, he was trying to go for his first title, but it did not happen. Wait a minute. Felix R.J. Elysium, didn't he win a title in South America this year? No, he did not. You sure? Yes. Instead, it was the jury who beat him. Oh, you're right. No, no, no. I, good I, call you, you, on you that. should be able to. All right. Oh, okay. First of all, great win uh, for um, Berenti. And he beat Kyrgios, your favorite guy that you said is going to get far. Kyrgios isn't my favorite guy. I just think he has a chance at Wimbledon. Does anyone think, beat Hatchinoff. am I alone in the sense that I think Nick Kyrgios has a chance, has a chance alone. to win Wimbledon? You're alone. I'm not alone. Ethan D.A. would agree. Let's hear the crickets. There's crickets? Maybe. Yeah, I get the, I get the, the wit. Okay. Uh, this was a good, I mean, you had the, the young Alexander Zverev in this tournament. Okay. He lost to Jari in Our, this tournament. Okay. No, no, to Brown, to Brown. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Sissy. Yeah, Dustin no, Dust, Dust, Brown. Yeah. Who watched that one? Yeah, he, he's the uh, Jamaican, I guess you could say native, but raised German. in Germany. Yes. Really fun player. Classic serving volleyer. I like the guy. I, I wish him the best. But let's be real. Would you, right now, Carla, or any of you, take on your fantasy team for a prize giveaway, in other words, a betting team, would you take Felix RJ Eliasim or Eliasim? Would you take uh, Berenti? I would take or, Felix. Or would you take Would you take uh, Sasha Zverev right now, Alexander, on your fantasy team right now? If you had to select them for your Wimbledon team, I would. I would not. None would, of them. I would pick the Canadian kid to go pretty far. Yes. Does does the, the does the winner of that tournament, uh, no. Berenti, does that matter? Uh, against someone like Felix playing Federer or Djokovic, does it matter? No. Uh, uh, with, with someone in the like uh, during the women's tournaments currently playing someone with the likes of Serena or Kvitova no. or Osaka. No. 
Uh, so yeah, I, I'm but just they saying. have to play this. They get points, and that's how they get into the bigger tournament. Well, yeah, I, I understand that. But we we've discussed this before. These are players that need the income. They need the exposure. They need sponsorship. Uh, uh, so the more they're out there, the better. But what I'm telling you, we've discussed this before, that in some of these tournaments, it's not that the bigger, bigger players can't play. It's just that injury becomes or exhaustion becomes a lot more freely to be able to be spoken, uh, uh, I guess, on, the, uh, on camera. Uh, whereas these younger players need to pay coaches, they need to pay lodging, they need to pay parents back for all their hard work and supporting their endeavors. Uh, they agreed to play 20 tournaments. They need to show up for sponsor for sponsor exposure. Whereas the, the you know the ten the ten million dollar athletes don't have to worry about it so much. Right, right. Hence why I don't think this match really is indicative of how good any of them do in Wimbledon. Okay, next tournament is the Libema Open. Uh, your champion there is Adrian Manorino from France, who defeated Jordan Thompson from Australia, seven six six three. Uh, Adrian Manorino had got into seven ATP finals, different tournaments and. This was the first time he, you know, he got to win one, I guess. Yeah, Manorino has always been... I would never pick him, by the way, for Wimbledon. Yeah, it... Grass, Manorino. Mm. Well, look, he's a player, and he is a tricky player, and he's a veteran player. Uh, Manorino, I've seen play Federer even, even tight uh, during Federer's heyday, in, in a sense, at Wimbledon. I, I, think, I think Manorino is a good player. Do I think he's a threat at Wimbledon? And, he'd, be, and it... he'd be born at Chorich in this tournament. Well, good as well. He beat, and then uh, Jari, Nicholas Jari, beat uh, Sissy Boss in this tournament. Now, Jari is your proverbial tall. Jari's Argentinian, Chilean. Chilean, yeah. He's tall. I think he's about six foot five. Not China. Uh, yeah, he, he, that was the, the slip of the him. tongue before. But Jari, uh, the, the, the Chilean player, is, is a tall, six five, solid serving, all court game type player. I think Jari. Jari is someone I would think about, depending upon draw setup, that I would look at at Wimbledon as well. He's a big, lanky, tall-serving dude, and he, he can make some noise, I think. Jari's another good person I forgot about. Well, we have upcoming tournaments that are, are qualifying rounds are taking place. The Fever Tree Championships. You've got uh, Rorinka, who's playing that. Shepavala is supposed to face Del Potro in that tournament. Rainich, uh, Anderson, Sissipas, and Chilik. Are all playing that tournament. That's a big tournament there. Yeah. Can't wait. That's a five hundred, by the way. Let's go. That's when does that start? Monday. It's the qualifying round started today. We will. It should be done with them. Yeah. Already. We look. The seven days off was good. We, we we needed to take the day off. Carla and I both and we played a lot of tennis over the seven days. Uh, she ended up with a little nagging injury. I ended up with a nagging injury, and here we go. So we had to have a kind of. It was kind of like uh, an outside force saying, wait a minute, poke, 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 little injury, poke, 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 little injury so we can get back in the lab. That's what I call it, the lab right here. Okay, next uh, one But is, that's a big tournament. We're going to be deep into that one. Next one is the Noventi Open, which is also known as HAL, and it's a 500. This is Roger Federer's tournament, which he's played. He's won nine of these, so he's trying to get first time getting to ten of the same tournament. Roger? Right? Yeah, he's got, he has nine titles. Um, at the Noventi Open, so he's trying to go for number 10. Yeah, and we know that Roger Federer wants to set the all-time titles record. I think he passed 100, but I think the ultimate record is like 109. He's at, one, he's at 101. I 10, but I, yeah, okay, but yeah, he, I think Connor still holds the record, I think, at 109 or something. I might have a number off, but I think Roger would like to attain that record uh, of the most titles ever and surpass Connors. And if I have that off, but I don't at think 109, so. 109, I, I think it's Connors. I, I didn't write that. So um, you have but a, also, if he wins Hal, though, it's 10. What, what, what happens if he wins Hal, though, he, for Wimbledon seeding? He will get from Wayne and Chia send me a message saying that it's important for Roger Federer to win this tournament because he would, if he wins it, he'll be ranked number two instead of three at Wimbledon. That's which huge. would be a very important, meaning that he would not face who? Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic, which I don't think he wants to face Novak in a semifinal. I think he'd rather see him in a final. Yeah, so, so picture this. If Roger Federer wins the Hal Germany grass court title upcoming, then he will be the number two in the world and the number two seed at Wimbledon. Novak Djokovic will be at the top at the one seed. So the one and two, you know, everybody after one and two is kind of just kind of thrown in there in a sense. You never know where three and four are generally going to go. They tend to flip-flop at will. But if, if Federer can win this, then he will solidify the two spot going into Wimbledon, which means um, that Federer's chance of getting to a final and winning Wimbledon is much more feasible because I think Federer can beat Nadal on grass. I think uh, with Djokovic, I think he can, but I think he would rather attempt to do it in a final with more crowd energy. So this makes Federer's run to Wimbledon much, much more uh, attainable uh, if, if he wins how. 
Um, but he has to win it. You'll have players like Alexander Zverev, Hachinov, Monfils, George uh, playing this tournament. So not big, big, big names like the other one. Sounds good, though. You have a few tournaments that are coming up. 250s the week after that, the Turkish Airlines Open and the Nature Valley International at Eastbourne. Those are, that's the last tournament before Wimbledon. On the women's side, we had, well, before I get to it, I heard Wozniak got married. So Good job, Wozniak. Good for her, but I'm not sure that she's going to be taking tennis that serious. Maybe well, Wimbledon well, will who be was her husband, like a hockey player or something? Uh, an Italian athlete uh, of some athlete, sort, right? So, yes, I didn't write it down. Cool beans. Okay, Carolina Garcia is your winner at Nottingham Title Nature Valley Open. She defeated Donna Vekic 2 6, 7 6, 7 6. Wasn't that a hardcore tournament? It's grass. Okay, there's one hardcore women's tournament that's still going on. Well, maybe it was. I <laughs> should find out. <laughs> yeah, there's one tournament. I forget if it's it Hurt her taking Bosch or, or if I said that right or uh, whatever. But anyway, there, one of these tournaments is a hardcore tournament still. Yes. Allison Brisk is your champion at the Lebema Open. Uh, she saved five match points against Ooh. Kiki Bertens. She had lost the first set uh, 6 0. She got Bagel and then went to win 7 6, 7 5. Good for Allison Brisk. Yes. I still don't think she'll make any noise at Wimbledon. I don't think Kiki Bertens will make any noise either. Kiki Bertens, I think, will win a few rounds. But but again, uh, uh, hitting, the, hitting the serve plus one or two to, to get the points over with, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be in Bertens's. Um, toolbox in a sense to win that many rounds. It depends on draw setup. You know, if she plays like Bouchard in the first round and then she gets um, uh, what? Uh, name someone in the second round that that, that that you think Bertens would just roll right over. Petkovic maybe in the second round. You know, and then she gets maybe a lucky, you know, Tiang Wang in the third. You know, but then when it gets down to, you know, Keys or any of these big hitting girls, Kavitovas, etc., Saka, Serena, it's, it's going to grass. be pretty tough. Okay, you have the Mallorca, Mallorca Open. Uh, it's on grass in Spain. Uh, Kerber's playing this. Sharapova's coming back playing this tournament. Azarenka, Benchik, oh, and Isimova. The Screech Fest. Yeah, I just was thinking about that. I, I didn't know you'd written that. Great, great, great work. Um, I did not know that that there would be a tournament uh, jointly um, joined by Azarenka and Sharapova. I, I think I have to turn this one off, it, it, at least if they play one another, because the screech level index meter always comes out, and it takes a lot of work setting up the screech level index meter to plug it into the into the TV, to access the world web, decibel level meter, all of our different satellites that we use. Our first match, Sharapova is Kusumova. So that's going to be a tough match. Yeah, and as a so, plays Garcia. So, I, look, I, I don't think I need to remind anyone to bring earplugs uh, to wherever um, uh, you watch anything that involves Sharapova as Ranka. But if they team off, I just suggest you pull the power plug out of the wall, turn the TV off, uh, or, or don't even buy a ticket because you will burst your TV with the screeching, the windows in your house. It's really an uncomfortable experience. So I, I hope that they don't have to meet. Okay. Next tournament that's taking place also, Nature Valley Classic. You have Osaka that's going to face off Sakari in the first round. Good man. Barty's facing off Vekic in, in that first round or second round because I think they get buys. Sabalenka, Kanta, Mladenovic, Venus Williams, and Carolina Pliskova. Big, big, big. Love that right there. Love yes. that right there. I think that Osaka will be way too much for Sakari on the surface. Osaka has a big serve. She's not a patient player. She attacks. Sakari hits off the back foot a lot. Uh, so I, I think Clay would be more friendly for Sakari. I think I think Osaka will destroy uh, Sakari relatively quickly. Maybe two and two. Maybe Osaka comes out rusty. You know, six four, and then Bagels are in the second. Don't forget that Sabalenka is only twenty one years old and just turned twenty one. Uh, she has a big hitting game. Maybe she'll make noise. We'll see. Pliskova, this is this is a tournament that she can win. Uh, but again, it depends on the trajectory of Serena and Osaka through the draw. Yes, definitely. Another tournament that'll take place is the Nature Valley International in Eastbourne. Those will have big names. I saw Halep was playing that one. All right, uh, getting late into the show. I didn't expect uh, to go this long today, but it's been a good one. So we're going to jump um, into rapid fire questions, which, if you are new to this channel or the show that we kind of call a family deal, uh, oh, by the way, Andy Murray is playing with Fernando Lopez doubles at the Queens Club. Interesting. Yeah. Fernando Lopez? Yes. Like Gonzo? No, I'm, I'm Feliciano, Feliciano Lopez, sorry. Fernando Lopez, that's what I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, he's gone, yeah. Okay, he's been But he's Fernando Gonzalez. Fern oh, yes, yes, you're right. Yes. So you got the two mixed up. Yes. 
All right, so rapid fire questions. The rules are, if you're at home, uh, please type out your answers without looking. If you're on your cell phone in comments below, just type them as you go. Uh, this is supposed to be a quick rapid fire game. Carla, you cannot look at my questions. You must look at the camera and you must answer everything off the top of your head. Carla does read all your answers when she gets her responses. She comes in here uh, to our little setting and she rips the papers off or gets the notebook and she goes down and actually reads the questions and how you answered. It's pretty fun and then she generally replies, right? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? You must type quickly. You must look at the camera. Here we go. Question number one. Carla and all of you. Yes. <laughs> if you could select one British or player from the United Kingdom or the island of England, including Scotland, if you could select one British tennis player to have on your fantasy team right now to go the farthest at Wimbledon, even if they were are retired and you could have them in the primes of their careers, out of the following players, who would you rather have? A, Andy Murray, B, Fred Perry, C, Johanna Kanta, D, Virginia Wade, E, Tim Henman, or, or other. Repeat, A, Andy Murray, B, Fred Perry, C, Johanna Kanta, D, Virginia Wade, E, Tim Henman, or F, other, and if you say other, who? And I would say Tim Henman. Tim Henman, just to see if he could finally win. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Fred Perry. Okay. Won uh, three women. It's 1934, 1935, and 1936 in a row, I think. So I'll, I'll go with good old Perry. Question number two. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. This is the third time I've asked this question. Will Serena Williams win Wimbledon? Yes. Yes and yes. Question number three. Because... I am positive, I am positive, me, I, because I am positive that Roger Federer will win Wimbledon. Does anyone think that Peter Dixria will do a better job at paying his debt than Rahesh did? Yes. Can you get that video one more time before we close the show out? I'm going to keep going, but. <laughs> Number four, does Rafael Nadal make the second week of yes, Wimbledon? Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a suspect. I'm not saying no, but I'm a suspect. Mm -hmm. Question number five. If you had to select one or the other to win Wimbledon, who would it be? And there's three choices. Three, three. Okay. If you had to select one or the other, who would you choose? Serena or Osaka to win Wimbledon. Oh, oh Serena. Federer or Djokovic? Federer. Nadal or Tiem? Nadal. Okay. Tiem has never done really well in and again, that was your selections, who you thought would win Wimbledon. Serena yeah. or Osaka, Federer or Djokovic, or Nadal or Tim. Question number six, your favorite dinosaur of all time. T-Rex, because my son loves him. I'm going Triceratops. Triceratops. Let's get down. T-Tops. Question number seven, other than tennis, what is your favorite sport to watch? Uh, swimming, because of Michael Phelps. Swimming. Yeah, only in the I mean, Olympics. I love to swim, but I think you only watch it once every four years. Yeah, just the Olympics I watch, that's it. But we watch sports every day. How does that even make sense? What are the oh, NBA finals? It has to be a special thing. All right, I, I like I'd love to watch American football on 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 TV during football season, but in in person and reality. So I think there's a difference. If you watch something and it's broadcasted and they have all these commentators and producers and everything, I think it's different than watching it in person. I love watching American football on the television with the right with the right crew doing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you have the wrong crew, it's just tough to watch either way. But in person on the field, like in the stands, and the football is kind of far away from you, I think it's rather boring to watch football in person. I love to play it, love to throw the football, but I think on TV, good, in person, boring. I think basketball though, to watch basketball in person with really good players close to the court, um, I think it's better to watch it in person. I, I don't think it's that exciting to watch it on TV, at least unless it's like the finals or something. Okay. So I, I kind of flip-flop it there. All right, question number eight. Do you think that before our time here on Earth ends, as at least you know us as individuals, so when we pass away, mm -hmm. do you think that before our time here on Earth ends, that we will finally learn that we are not alone in the universe, or will we just... Uh, still always remain alone. In other words, are, do you believe that we will... We'll remain alone. We'll yes. remain alone. I, I think differently. I, I think we will learn about... He always asks alien questions. Always. I like aliens. 
You got a problem with that? I like my little green men, or orange, or white, or small gray, whites, whatever. I like that. I, th I think we will find out within the next 20 years. Okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Number 10. Name one thing you wish you could go back in time and redo. My whole tennis career. <laughs> Work harder? Work harder. Practice a little more? Yes. I would, I would redo college. I mean, I graduated and so forth, but I, I wish I would have done it with less bumps in the road. Question number 11. Okay? When you think of tennis, what is the absolute first thing that pops into your mind? Tennis racket. I don't know. Okay, racket. I think grass. Okay. Tennis group. If so, if I went, if someone woke me up and said, "It's time to wake up. The word is tennis." What do you think? I'm thinking grass. Not me. So I love this grass court season. Okay. Question number twelve. Name one thing that you can buy for one dollar or less that you actually get a good value out of. A Snickers bar. No, that's junk. <laughs> What is that? I remember that because my dad used to give me a dollar. I used to he used to say, "Go get me a sneakers bar so I can keep playing tennis." Because he didn't need anything. And she used to go look for a pair of sneakers, like yes. like tennis shoes. That's that why I said sneakers bar because that's what I remember. Yeah, so he would say, "Go get me a sneakers bar," but because he was his Spanish from accent. Honduras and the Spanish accent, she would get the dollar. She'd go to the store looking for sneakers, like tennis shoes, like Sneaker. sneakers. I'll buy sneakers for a dollar. For how was how a kid. this for a dollar? I was thinking dish soap or toilet paper. Like, I can wash dishes on the dollar aisle, you know, with dish soap, toilet paper, you know, it goes a long sure, way. Sure, that goes a long way. You know, you spend a dollar, you get six rolls, pretty good. For about a buck. Somebody, somebody can say, what kind of toilet paper are you using? One ply. <laughs> All right, bonus question. Here we go. Will you think about having Dominic TM on your fantasy team for Wimbledon? No. Last bonus question. Here we go. Anthony Davis. Uh, former New York or New Orleans Pelican basketball player, seven footer, really good player. Anthony Davis was just traded to my team, the Los Angeles Lakers. By the way, I was born a Laker fan, raised in California. Um, so my homage to the Lakers go was way back before LeBron was there. I'm talking Magic, Worthy, AC Green, Cooper, the whole bit, right? Raised around the old school Lakers. Are the Lakers now the favorite to win the NBA championship next year because they signed Anthony Davis? No, not because they signed him. I just always have hope for LeBron. We'll see. I, I, I don't think that they're the favorites. I think you still have to look at Toronto and Golden State based upon injuries, though. They could get they could get a chance to shine. I think Vegas has them as the favorites already. Okay. Just saying. All right, ending the show as usual with a quote and thought of the day. So uh, because we're late on time, I'm going to jump right into it. Are you ready? Okay. Here is the thought of the day or quote of the day. A different version of you exists in the minds of everyone who knows who you are. Let me repeat that. A different version of you exists in the minds of everyone who knows who you are. That's really deep if you think about it. I'll explain. We all think we know ourselves. We all think, how other, we, all think we know how others view us. We all make decisions in our heads on, uh, uh, based upon this. Um, so in other words, like sometimes when I coach tennis, you know, I, 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 sometimes I assume I'm expected to be the talker, the life of the sessions. And sometimes, you know, I don't have good days. So sometimes I feel like others in their heads are thinking that, oh, he's got to be in a bad mood because he's not talking as much as usual. But that's my head saying that, right? It's not their head saying that. They're probably thinking about aliens or as something different kidding about the aliens, but I'm just saying, just because we think in our heads that someone else is thinking something about us, or uh, that someone thinks this way about us, that's how we perceive it, generally 99 million times out of 100 million times, you're, you're wrong, and it's just yourself um, um, leading yourself into a false reality. Uh, Carla, do you know any examples that, that you can um, uh, pitch forward about how maybe you see yourself, and then you do things based upon that, but really and truly, if you wouldn't have done that in the first place, it wouldn't even have mattered? Uh, no. How can you not think that? I mean, usually, like you said, if you're quiet or something, I know with me, if they see me sick or something, or they think something's wrong, or if I'm uh, not as energetic, not running around the tennis court, people might think, You know, you're, you're thinking in your head that they, they must think that I'm a bad think. person. Sure. They must think. That's what or I'm talking about. Or if I say no a lot, they think, oh, maybe she's... Nah. Yeah, maybe she's just mean. Yeah. So we go out on the court, you're coaching. In other words, she's saying, oh, you did that wrong. You did that wrong. You did that wrong. You did that wrong. 
you, it's just that you're being brutally honest and uh, and that's just you, but in your head you might think that they may think you're mean. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Sure. And then we adjust our personalities based upon these things is what I'm saying. I feel like I'm at school, yeah. Yeah, so there, there's things that um, that we, we do, uh, such as talk when we shouldn't or do things when we shouldn't, but we do them because our mind is telling us that we perceive this sure, energy like when coming you have towards a, when you have a student that you're getting hard on, you think maybe the parents might be upset with you. But maybe yeah. they're not. Maybe they're liking it. Yeah, or competing with the Joneses. You know, you, your neighbor buys something and you feel like you have to go buy it. And that, you know, the, 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 the Joneses competition is the weirdest thing in the world. I, we don't do it, but, but, but you know, you, you see your, your neighbor gets a new car and all of a sudden you get a fancy for a new car. And then, you know, then they get a new a garage and then you want to build a garage and it turns into a... Who wants a... Uh, yeah, so... Uh, and, and, and this is this is kind of a final thought. You're smashing tennis rackets. When you see players smash the tennis racket on the court, uh, this, in my opinion, is one of the worst things. Because if you see someone smash the racket, then they're automatically going to think they're a spoiled, bad boy, bratty kid or pro player or whatever it is, even though they may have just had a bad day. Uh, so racket smashing is one of those things um, that I find to be a, a good example of that. Anyway, that's it, everyone. Uh, much love to all of you. Uh, please like and subscribe and share our channel. Uh, and we will see you in a couple of days. Uh, in the meantime, go Federer. Let's go. Ready for this bet with Peter Dixria. Um, and again, thank you very much uh, to Rahesh Kumar for his debt payment. Uh, hopefully, uh, yours will be better when Carla beats you uh, next time. All right, uh, much love to all, and we will see you guys in a couple of days. As Carla always says, cheers. since it's London, cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers, Mike. See ya.